Hello and welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. In this video, I'm gonna show you a quick tip for how you can kind of debug some of your DAX. I'm also going to show you how to solve a common problem that I've seen many, many times inside of the DAX language, so stay tuned. Before we begin, do you wanna learn more about DAX or Microsoft Fabric? You can go to prag.works forward slash Mitchell40 and save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription to over 100 classes. Now, on to our video. All right, so now that we got that out the way, we're gonna dive right into Power BI Desktop. I'm gonna kind of draw out the scenario for you, and then we're gonna talk about how to debug and how to solve this problem. So what I wanna start with is a very simple example of sales by year. And if I were writing this for real, uh, you know, I would write this a little bit differently, but I wanna highlight a very specific problem and issue, a concern that I've seen many, many times. So I'm gonna write a new measure inside of DAX, inside of Power BI, and what I want to do with this measure is I just want to call it sales by year. Now, if I'm writing this in the most simplistic way necessary, I'm just going to say, all right, calculate total sales, but ignore the filter that's currently coming from month, right? So I would do something like this, calculate total sales, but I want to ignore the filter that's coming from month because month is currently in the filter context now. We know that if you write DAX, you are changing filter context all the time inside of the DAX language. And this is no different. And this is just a very simple modification of that filter context, right? So I'm gonna tell it, hey, from the date table, ignore the filter that's coming from that month. So I need to wrap that inside of an all. You could obviously also write remove filters if you feel more comfortable with that but that's what I'm doing. I'm removing the filters that are coming from that column. So I'm gonna hit enter. And then of course I wanna format this very quickly. So I'll go up here and format this as a currency. And then I'm gonna add that new measure that I created right here inside of my expression. And unfortunately, it didn't work. Now this is it. This is very bizarre if you don't know what to do at this point. And what I mean by that is this, normally this would work. Normally, if you have a single column filter that's on this table and you wanna remove the filter that's coming from that attribute, from that table, normally what you can do is you can come in here and just say, hey, remove the filter from it. But this one doesn't work because there's something else going on behind the scenes. And I've talked to consultants and people that have been working in Power BI a long time and what they end up doing is they come up here and they're unsure how to solve it so they literally wind up ignoring all the filters in the entire table. And that's just not what we want to do here. So let's take a look at the debugging tip, the debugging trick that I said I was going to show you. And let me specify, there's about four or five debugging tips that I use on a regular basis inside of DAX. People that work with me know this. Some days I do four, five, six virtual mentoring calls with customers where we're solving problems while I'm helping them understand the DAX language better. So I'm writing DAX all the time. These tips and tricks are hugely important and I promise to do more videos on how to debug your code. Simple videos, not overcomplicating things, but just quick ways to be able to see what's going on. So let's take a quick look at this. I want to do, first and foremost, I'm going to turn on the performance analyzer and I'm going to start recording. Now what the performance analyzer allows us to do is actually look at the DAX code that's sent to the VertiPak engine in the background. Previously, I would have opened up DAX Studio, copied that code, pasted it in there, and taken a look at it. But now we have the DAX query view right here inside of Power BI Desktop. So that's what I'm going to use. I'll kind of click over here real quick and flip back, see if I can get it to set up and populate that table query, and there it is. So we're going to click on that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna click on copy query. So I'll click on that right there to copy the DAX query. And then I'll go ahead and come over to the DAX query view and I'm going to put the code right here. And there's a lot of stuff going on in here. It's a little bit confusing if you've never looked at the queries that's generated from your Power BI before. But what I wanna look at is something very, very specific and it's this right here. You'll notice that it's actually grouping by the year, by the month, and the month number. Now, Mitchell, what's going on? Month number isn't in our report. It's not in our visual. We didn't tell it to 
filter by month number. I, I never told it to do that. So why is it picking up the month number? Well, that's a good question. And this is why this is a common thing that I come across pretty often, but not every day. And most people, from my experience of people I've talked, they don't know how to solve this, so they, they just ignore all filters. But when I ignored the filter on month, I also needed to ignore the filter on the month number of year because see, I've set up my data model to display the month name, but to sort the data by the month number of year. So they are connected in the data model. So when you're using the month, inadvertently it's also grouping by the month number because you're sorting by that. And so it's now part of that DAX query that gets sent back to the VertiPack engine. So now that we're able to just look at this, look at this one little part right here and get a better idea of what's going on, now we can modify our DAX query in order to solve the problem that we're looking at, right? So I'm gonna go back over to the report view. And in the report view, what I wanna do is go back into our DAX calculation. So let me go find my cells by year. And then instead of just saying remove filters from the month, we're now going to say remove filters from the month and the month number of year. So I'll come in here and I'll say, all right, the next thing I wanna do is also remove filters from the month number of year. Right there, that's it, that's the trick. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. We'll take a look at the code again and now it looks beautiful. In fact, to take this just a step further, if I come over here and I also choose the year 2008, you'll be able to see that the number between 2007 and 2008 are different because it's only returning the cells for that year based on the filter context, based on our DAX. Now, I know if you've written a calculation for sales by year before, you would write it a little bit differently. So would I. I would literally ignore all the table, you know, all the columns in the date table except for calendar year, fiscal year, whatever that is, of course, right? I get it. But that was not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video was to say, hey, here's a common problem I see people run into. And what they do when they run into it is literally ignore the entire table because they're not sure how to solve it. They just don't know why, right? And so I wanted to show you the performance analyzer, how you could copy that query. Hopefully you're already familiar with that anyway, but then how we can now leverage the DAX query view to get a better glimpse into what's going on behind the code. And as I've said before, there are quite a few small little debugging tips and tricks like this to give you some insight into what's going on. And I'm gonna continue to cover those so keep, keep watching us here at Pragmatic Works. Make sure to like and subscribe. Turn on that notification so you get notified whenever we do videos in the future. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.